Hey, it's Jeff Chubb, and I'm here with uh, the June 20th real estate market update for the state of Massachusetts. Uh, a lot's been going on. Uh, you know, interest rates have been climbing. They went up a lot um, real fast, and we've ultimately seen some of that um, overlay in, in the data that we saw from, from the sales last week. So the best and first place that we should probably start with is inventory. So inventory specifically for single family homes in the state of Massachusetts was 4,957 units. Um, to put this kind of a little bit in perspective during the, uh, 2007, 2008 downturn, right? We had about 38,000 units on the market, 37,000, 38,000 at the peak. Um, so that's one end of, end of the spectrum versus the other end is um, in February, end of February this year, we had 1,902 units on the market for me keeping track of data. So those are the two ends of the perspective, you know, the, the pendulum here. And, and we've started to see it swing a little to the point where we're at 4,957 units currently on the market specifically for single family homes. And that's a 7.85% increase over the week prior. Um, it's a 22.61% increase um, when we look at 28 day averages, right? Because I'm always pulling data on every single Monday. Because if you compare it from a Monday to a Thursday, it's going to be your, your data sample is going to be a little bit different. And then a year over year average, we have actually a 25.5% uh, increase um, in inventory compared to where we were this time last year. Um, so single families, we're, we're definitely starting to see a lot more inventory come on the market um, and, and we're starting to see it pile up a little bit, which is a really great thing for buyers. Under agreements, we had 1,241 single family homes in the state of Massachusetts go under our agreement um, last week. And this is a 16% decrease compared to the activity that we saw the week previously. So um, my mind and my eyes, if you will, I truly think when, when we saw interest rates go up 1% in a matter of three or four days, I think that this was kind of the fallout you know, from that, if you will. I mean, they went up 1%. To give you an idea, for every 1% home buyers go up, we lose 10% of our buying power. So literally within a weekend, we had home buyers you know, lose 10% of their buying power from the time that they had been pre-approved, which is Pretty significant um, when you when you come to think about it. Um, so solds, we had 929 single family homes sell in last week, which, um, by the way, it's always towards the end of the month where we see a pickup in regards to the amount of houses selling. And it's also on average a 45 day closing period. So anything that we're really truly seeing in the marketplace today is not going to be played out in the sold data. And then our months of inventory, which is ultimately the thing that keeps us in line, it's it's like the temperature check of the market, right? So we have 1.55 months worth of data on the market, which signals an extremely strong seller's market. Um, and this is up from 1.46 months worth of inventory last week. Now, I'm gonna throw the disclaimer on there because it's not baked into the data. The current market conditions, even on the months of inventory aspect is not baked in there. Um, you know, the under agreements, the solds, right? Because in, in order to figure out that months of inventory stat, you actually take the amount of closings for the last four months, okay? So we have a little bit more of a straight line average and then divide it by how many total, uh, you know, units are currently on the market. So, you know, I, I just said, we saw a 16% decrease in the amount of single families that were sold last week. So, you know, it's using old data from, last four months versus the newer data that were ultimately kind of the new norm. God, I really hate using that term, but it's the new normal in regards to uh, less sales that are going to be happening. So even this months of inventory number really isn't capturing what the current market conditions are out there for sellers as well as buyers, because there's some really great buying opportunities out there. Um, so for condos, we had 2,691 condos currently on the market in the whole entire state of Massachusetts. This is an 8.29% increase compared to where we were uh, on Monday of last week, 26.9%, uh, so essentially 27% increase uh, over, over where we were just 28 days ago. And it's actually 6.8% below inventory levels of where we were this time last year. So inventory for condos is actually still, even with our you know pretty drastic increases in the amount of inventory in the market, are still below where they were 
um, just one year ago. Uh, there were 461 condos that went under agreement uh, in the prior week. This is a 13.4% decrease in the amount of under agreements that we saw. Again, probably a lot of the same reasoning in regards to the interest rates and what we saw in the single family market. The solds were down to 414 uh, total condos were sold, and that was a median price of 530,000 compared to 560, ultimately, well, 567,000. $1,950 to be exact the week beforehand. And by the way, that reminds me, the median single family home price was $640,000 last week compared to $625,000 um, this week. And then our months of inventory uh, for condos um, was 1.45 months worth of inventory. And this is an increase from just 1.32 months last year, or excuse me, last week. So you know, really what's happening here are the months of inventory, while they're both for single family and condos really signaling a strong seller's market, they're growing pretty rapidly. And they're going to continue to grow pretty rapidly because, again, this is not the true, that 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 snapshot, if you will, that, that indicator is not a really good tool for what it's like out there. Um, you know, I've, I, I started... Well, I started in 2002. I started up here in Massachusetts in 2008. Um, so worst market since the Great Depression, which, you know, I think there's a lot to be said in regards to that, knowing that experience, how to sell houses um, in that in that type of climate, right? There's, there is a skill, there's a big skill there, um, which we're ultimately going to need to start seeing more and more of if you're on the seller's side that that you need to be looking more at the marketing program. You can't, your expectations need to be in line that your house isn't just gonna sell that first weekend. It's gonna take some time for that market to absorb your house and ultimately for that market to create that buyer. And that's the issue is that we're not seeing a whole lot of new buyers come to market. The sales that are happening today from my eyes and from what I can see are more the, the hangover buyers, if you will, the buyers that came into the market two, three, four, six, ten 10 months ago, right? Those are the people that are actively buying houses. Um, and, and ultimately, I, I do believe that we're starting to see after there was an initial shock, interest rate shock, if you will. Um, and, and I've started to see a little bit more buyer activity where people are kind of getting used to this higher interest rate extreme, you know, this is like, oh, again, hate using this term, but it's the new normal, right? Higher interest rates, which by the way, historically speaking, are still really, really, really great interest rates, um, just as a heads up. But so what does it mean for buyers? Ultimately, this is a great time to buy because um, you got a lot more inventory on the market. You can do these things called home inspections, which by the way, <laughs> you were not able to get a house under agreement just two or three months ago with a home inspection, you had to pay so drastically more over the asking price in so many of these houses. It was just absolutely insane, right? That is really pulled back. You're, you're starting to see a lot more price reductions from sellers, which is really great news for you buyers. Um, you know, a home inspection is more the standard home. <laughs> Home sale contingencies, baby, they're coming back and they're coming back strong, right? That normal market is coming back where ultimately buyers have just gotten the, the living daylights beaten out of them for the last couple of years. And, and that pendulum swinging where, where they're starting to get more and more power in this marketplace. Um, again, it hasn't shifted over to a buyer's market that from what the inventory or excuse me, from what the numbers show, um, the buyers definitely have a, a, you know, they have a little bit of an upper hand, if you will, um, in our current marketplace. So why is it such a good time to buy? Ultimately, it is because of the interest rates, because while 6% might seem high right now, um, I can't guarantee you much, but what I can guarantee is that interest rates are going to continue to go up. So that 6% interest rate what might seem really high right now is going to be an extremely good value by the end of the year when interest rates could very well be at eight or nine percent. Um, and, and, and to give you an idea, you know, if you're locking in your payment today at that six percent interest rate uh, or six point two five percent interest rate, in order, if interest rates floated up to call it 8.25%, in order for you to have that same mortgage payment that you could today and interest rates floated up to 8.25%, you would need home prices to come down a, a little over 20%. And, and that's just not going to happen. So um, that's ultimately why it makes so much sense to buy a house today, lock in that 6% rate, because it's giving you the... Um, 
it, it's giving you stability, right? You know, in the high inflation, everything else is increasing in prices, but when you know what your mortgage payment is, you know, that, that, that gives you a, a little piece of stability. So um, again, it's uh, Jeff Chubb with eXp Realty. Uh, should you have any questions, whether you're looking to buy or sell, uh, would love to chat with you a little bit more, talk about your market specific or the market specifically that you're looking in because we are seeing some markets. Uh, Hingham is a great example. In the beginning of May, they had 18 units on the market. Today, they have 40, right? So some markets are outpacing the averages and, and are having ultimately a lot more inventory flow on the market, different price points are getting hammered a little bit different than, uh, you know, for example, the luxury market. We're, we're starting to see that um, really soften up quite a bit, right? Which ultimately means there might be some deals and values there, right? Um, so, you know, it's a little bit of a confusing time. I get it. That's why I'm here. Sold over a thousand homes. Um, have been doing this for, for nearly two decades. Um, and ultimately, I'm here to answer any of your questions, whether you're a current homeowner and just maybe a little bit scared of the current market conditions. You shouldn't be, by the way. Um, you know, homeownership is literally the best place that you can be in a high inflationary environment from, you know, it's the best asset class to be in. So uh, really got long here at the end. I'm going to continue to do this week over week. Uh, but if you got any questions, you know how to find me. Have a great day.